day, but I think it's quite fresh. Um, today, uh, we are going to study uh, together the life of uh, the founding master, uh, Sotesan, second picture. So, first picture is, what was the first picture, do you know? First picture. Steve, what was the first picture? So, meditating on questions about the universe? Yes, questions. So, at the age of early, eh, he started to ask questions. So now, second, second picture is Sutesan so Prayer. So, um, from the uh, age of uh, 11 to 16, Sutesan so started to pray. Uh, if you visited uh, you know, his birthplace, Yongsan, uh, he climbed up the mountain pretty steep, about four kilometers, about three miles, you know, the steep. And also, those days, they're very thick <coughs> trees, so probably bears and even tigers. It's quite, uh, you know, uh, I mean, the little boy, it might be quite challenging, but he prayed for five years. 11 to 16. So what was his goal to pray was to resolve his body questions. Why skies are blue? Why mothers and you know, fathers are close? You know, why, you know, why, why, why? So he has so many whys. So you may ask him, why choosing prayer? You know, there may be other method, but why he ch chose uh, prayer was an uh, immediate question will, will be, to whom he asked help, to whom he prayed. So here, mountain spirit or mountain god. I think uh, we are quite familiar with uh, Greek mythology and Roman uh, myth and Hindu, many deities. You know, Zeus, Apollo, and Shiva, and Ganesha. So, human um, religious kind of um, development or evolution, the poly a polytheistic kind of, de many deities that was in the past. And then, once uh, Judeo-Christian tradition sort of evolved. Uh, one God, you know, so monotheistic kind of has been the direction. So anyhow, in Korea, there are many gods, you know, the mountain gods, you know, the tree gods, you know, probably spirit might be better than the God. So when his uh, parents and then, you know, the relatives, uh, went up to the mountain and prayed. The well-being of all family and you know, good harvest. So that's some of pray uh, regularly. And so uh, to whom they pray? Mountain God. Mountain God is governing and then providing those uh, support. So, aha! I should ask the mountain god my questions. <clears throat> so he uh, went up, and then just like uh, you know his parents and uh, what they did, you know, some fruits and something offered, and then he prayed. So what happened? He prayed for five years. What happened? Was his question answered? No. His effort turned into vain. So he was quite helpless. Um, I met uh, you know, the friends who loved Christian uh, faith or tradition. The most experienced 
that prayers are not answered and God does not respond to their prayers. And then next step is, there is no such God who listens to prayer and who responds. So, you know, omnipotent and omnipresent God or supernatural being does not exist. So somewhat kind of, you know, the pillar of faith collapsed. And then seek for pillar of practice. So which uh, Buddhism or East Asian kind of has offered, you know, you are your own destiny. So you should cultivate your self power, your you know, destinies. So that's uh, uh, somewhat you can see uh, that uh, faith part. So actually, I was uh, quite fascinated, you know, while I was preparing. I mean, even though I have been very familiar with one Buddhism, uh, one Buddhist tradition, how did Sutesan frame his teaching? Yes, he was disappointed during his early ages, prayer. And prayer did not work. Then. Did he totally abandon it? Prayer? No prayer. No. So it was quite fascinating when you see one with this teaching, there is one pillar is faith and prayer. Let me just talk about my own experience. Um, I was raised in a one Buddhist you know, deep, uh, devout families. And during my uh, uh, senior high year, senior high school time, my uh, single uh, hope was I am going to go to the college in Seoul. You know, uh, I was raised in very countryside, rural areas. So I want to go to Seoul. I want to, you know, uh, <laughs> go to the college in Seoul. So I prayed for three years, you know, every day, you know, pray. Yes, and also I studied uh, quite hard. But somehow I ended in not going to uh, university in uh, Seoul, but our capital city. I uh, was enrolled in Wollongong University to become a minister. So after I uh, went to one Buddhism seminary, prayer did not work. Prayer did not work. So during four years in my uh, college seminary years, you know, usually we do pray morning and evening. I usually went up to the top of the, you know, our residence, you know, the roofing area. You know, I look at skies and I didn't really do it. And, um, but I tried to really uh, cultivate, you know, the meditation and you know, those practices. So right after my college years, probably about two years, I came to the USA. So I, my life was pretty the same routine. You know, I tried to do meditate regularly, but I didn't do the prayer. And, but during my six years, uh, uh, the, my studies at Temple University, I cultivated really, really harmful and bad eating habits. <laughs> Whenever I felt bad, I ate sweet, and then I became sick. So that's the visual cycle, you know. And um, I realized that, no, I should be at least, you know, be responsible for my eating, you know? <laughs> you just kept eating and then you sit. No, you shouldn't do that. So I tried uh, with my self-power, my will, but somehow it didn't work. So I became very helpless. And then I thought, yes, at the scripture, Whenever you face difficult situations, 
you pray. So, so that's the kind of the time I went back to the prayer, and then I was quite feel at home. And then for a year I prayed, and I also was very mindful. And then I shifted my eating habits. Uh, I mean, not hundred percent, but <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here the one Buddhism Sutta so San has two pillars. One pillar is faith and prayer, and the other pillar is practice and meditation. So two pillars, faith, prayer, practice, and meditation. Two pillars. But generally in Buddhism, uh, except uh, Shin Buddhism, uh, Buddhist uh, uh, tradition, usually Buddha awakened one, and Buddha's teaching, Dharma, and Buddhist community, Sangha, those three uh, refugees are not really described as the level of faith or worship. So it's kind of more uh, equal and sort of you know solidarity that the level. So in Buddhism, the the level of faith isn't that, or the uh, pillar of faith isn't that clear. And then. Why and how Sutesan developed those two pillars? So that was my question. You know, even though I have known it, but while I'm preparing this uh, talk, so I have uh, two things showcase.
chapter 9, Mental Formation and Formal Prayer, there, founding master clearly stated, you pray, so you started with, may heaven and earth watch over us, heaven and earth, all the nature, universe, and may parents watch over, yes, your root, physical root, and your mental root, parents, may fellow beings, all beings in the universe, animals, plants, and non-sentient beings, you know, these fellow beings, and may laws respond to us, all the teachings and regulations. So that's the, we are presenting to, we, we, are, we are presenting other power, nature, heaven and earth, parents, and fellow beings, and laws. Then, uh, you may ask, what type of prayer are there? So, founding master, he talks about two types of prayer. So, we may pray just silently, inwardly, and also we may pray, real pray, pragmatic type pray. So, pragmatic pray means if uh, uh, Barry needs some help, well, please let Barry be happy and real. You know, I can pray, but I find out what Barry needs. So I buy things or I give the money. So that's more pragmatic prayer. So in the uh, uh, principle, Mental formation and formal prayer is more inward, silent prayer. And then the next chapter, the Dharma of making good offering is actual, you are giving help. You are really reaching out in action. So that's two types of the prayer. And um, then what are the contents of the prayer? What are the contents of the prayer? So here, uh, founding master said to offer offer thanks whenever you whenever we encounter happy situations. So whenever we are happy, things are done well, then we offer thanks. We we'll often forget, you know, I'm happy and then just forget, but offer thanks. And then um, beg forgiveness. Whenever we encounter distressing situation, whatever I've done wrong or something's not really going well, then pray for forgiveness. And prayer for decision, whenever we find it difficult to reach out any decision, I don't know what to exactly do it, then pray for form decision. And then, favorable situation whenever we encounter difficulty. Uh, so whenever we are faced in very difficult situation, then we pray, you know, please help to move through and go through this uh, difficult situation. And then, the, uh, whenever we are in very wonderful, you know, kind of the situation, then, Pray, we may not fall into corruption or just uh, indulgence. So that's the contents of the, the prayer in the scripture it is described. And you know, myself, I like you know the Christian um, kind of theologians and uh, their prayer. I like quite lots. So I just want to share. The uh, neighbor, uh, Rhino neighbor, his prayer for serenity. Prayer, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the differences. I think that's quite crisp, you know, that prayer. Uh, we face quite all the time. And then when I visited uh, Gethsemane Abbey in Kentucky, I found out Thomas Merton's prayer. 
The fact that I think that I am following your will does not mean I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please me. And I hope that I have that desire in all that I am doing. I think it seems very honest, you know. I want to please God. But the way I am doing it, I am not sure I am really doing it or not. You know? So uh, that's um, so the prayers, uh, you know, we are quite uh, familiar with, uh, you know, uh, Mother Teresa's prayer, you know, other uh, prayers, but I just give uh, to. So uh, the one institute, after 3,000 days prayer, institute opened 2002 September. And then uh, Reverend O who was the head of uh, Philadelphia Temple. She started and we opened. And then after she moved to other place, I didn't really continue, so I stopped quite a while. And then I realized that, you know, I faced so many difficulties. You know, we wanted to find a new building, it didn't happen, and the institute had, you know, up and down, so many things, so I thought, I went back to the prayer again. So, uh, starting from one Buddhism year 100, I started to pray. And then, you know, last year, we moved to the new building. And then, I'm heading for my retirement. So, this morning, uh, 22,576 days prayer we did. <laughs> so, you know, well, uh, uh, during the, those prayer, what I found out is my mind is quite stable. Regardless of any external changes or any challenges. So because results are not under my control, I'm just doing it. So stability. And um, so uh, somewhat as a conclusion, I want to just add a couple more things. As an uh, American citizen, everyone has a civic duty, right? Mm -hmm. Pay taxes, obey <laughs> rules and regulations. So one Buddhism uh, practitioners, we have a great commitment. Support the temple and offer prayers morning and evening. <coughs> Myself, usually evening, I'm so tired. So, you know, in, during those, you know, tired time, instead of, you know, giving all the, my prayer verses, I just bow four times, you know. <coughs> may heaven and earth, and may parents, and may fellow beings, and may laws. I pray for one more, one big family. <laughs> so very short. But even that, if I forgot, then I just walk, you know, uh, kind of, you know, uh, <coughs> sit, and then at least you do that prayer before you go to sleep. So that's one of kind of my practice. And then um, I am trying to pray in English. I thought, you know, I, I devoted myself to America, and I want to have English is more have more feelings and more, you know, connections and bonds. So I tried to my prayer in English. I mean, Korea is definitely mother tongue, but with effort. So that's one of uh, the one. And then um, the, the last part is Mother Teresa. Uh, her prayer, timeless and places prayer. So I think it really makes sense. So she, Pray uh, when mind disturbed and darkened and emotions are upset. Pray, please forgive God for me. I offer prayer during this busy, hectic, and troubled situation. So prayer, somewhat, you know, very honest, and then have a dialogue 
that uh, so that's um, so I think uh, as an old Buddhist practitioner, you know, let's really keep that pillar, the pillar of faith and prayer and pillar of practice and meditation in balance. And so that's some of uh, this call. And uh, let's just read uh, the uh, offering prayer at Samba Pes second um, sentence, second paragraph. Second paragraph, page one, number two, second paragraph. Every day for five years, he climbed Samba Pass four kilometers from his home and prayed fervently to meet a mountain spirit. Though he had never met a mountain spirit, his sincerity and dedication greatly empowered his mind and became the spiritual ground that enabled him to enter into deep samadhi later. And so next month, February, we'll, be, we'll study the, the searching of spiritual guide. Please read and then you know, think about any questions. Uh, then uh, we can, you, your kind of, you know, understanding might be more different.